Hello, everyone, and welcome to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale, here in the Valley of the Sun on a beautiful spring afternoon. I'm Bob Varsha, working with Steve Mignante, Rick DeBrule, Lynn Woodward, Tiffany Stone, Tyler Hoover, and Christian Murphy. And there's a look inside the acres of tents housing the dream rides that will cross the Barrett Jackson block. Here's a 1969 Ford Mustang Boss 429, Wimbledon White 69 Boss 429 Mustang, finishing car craft in March 69, assigned KK number 1555, restored concourse standards. This car retains its original rear suspension and unique 69 Boss 429 rear sway bar setup. The engine, the engine is a date coded correct HP 429 cubic inch V8 block with the original magnesium valve covers and early style intake manifold. Has a top loader, four speed manual transmission. The Boss has its original dash VIN tag, original door tag, and the KK number decal as well. As well, it has the original VIN stamping in the apron. The car comes with all of its factory paperwork, owner's manuals, safety hints, and a deluxe report to prove its authenticity. For those that are keeping up in the catalog, we are on lot number 1391. We still have an amazing lineup of vehicles. Don't go anywhere. Lot number 1391, 1969 Ford Mustang Boss, 429. All right, how to get down, buddy, paying $500,000 and $500,000 to give $100,000. 100 is bid, now 25 and 125. 550, 850-pound daughter, now 75, and 175, 5, 5, 2, and 200,000 on it, and 2, and 2, and 200,000 daughter, daughter, but to get down to, to get down 200,000 daughter, 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 and 2, 2, 2, and 200,000 daughter, daughter, but to get down 200,000 daughter, 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 to get down 175, to get down 200,000, and 200,000 daughter, and 2, and 2, and 200,000 daughter, 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 to get down 2, to get down 200,000 daughter, daughter, but to get down to get down to get down to get down 2, 2, 2, and 200,000 daughter, and 200,000 daughter, 85, and 185, 5, 5, how did it get down 185 daughter, daughter, to get down 1, to get down 85, to get down 1, to get down 85, 5, and 1, 85 dollar dollar pay to get down to get it to get up on 85 and 185 thousand dollar and want to get up 85 to get up on to get up 85 trade trade 185 the boss has its original dash vin tag original door tag kk number decal as well as original vin stampings on the apron also equipped with a top loader four speed manual transmission five ninety two to get down 200,000 dollar and 2 to 95 and 2 and 200,000 dollar and 2 to get down 2 to get down 2 to get down 200,000 dollar dollar but to get down what do you want to pay and 2 to 2 down 10 and 2 10 20 and 220 and 220 and 220,000 dollar and 2 to get down 20 dollar dollar but to get down 220 30 and 2 30 40 and 240,000 dollar dollar but to get down what do you want to pay to get down 230 40 and 2 to get down 40 dollar dollar pay to get down to get it 10 40 50 50 60 and 260,000 dollar and 268,000 dollar dollar but to get down to get Look at the dead, look at the dead, get up, buddy, pay here. And 268,000 on it, and 268,000 on it, on it, but to get all through, well done. And 255 is bid, and 260, and 255 with Camille, and 260,000 on it, and Tice, you're out. And 260 on it, pay to get up, 260, 257, now 60, and 268,000 on it, all through, all done. And 260,000 on it, and 5, and 265, and 70, and 270,000 on it, and 270,000 on it, and 270,000 on it, now 80, 80. 75, 80, and 280,000 on it. And 2 to get up, 82 to get up, 82 to get up, 80,000 dollar on it. 80 to get up, to get it here. And 285, and 285, and 90, 90, just be 300, and 300,000 on it. And 90, now 3, and 3, 3, 3, and 300,000 on it, on it, but to get down 3, 3, 3, and 300, through 95, now 3, 95, 7, now 3, and 297, and 3, and 300,000 on it. And 3 to get down, 3 to get down, 300 is bid, 5, and 305, and 305. Thousand on it, out of it to get out everybody through at 30555 on him, pay to get up 305 and 305,000 on it, out of it to get out everybody through. Sold right there at $300,000, Camille. Now, here comes lot 1374.1, a 2006 Ford GT. And we got some interesting comparisons on GTs because some are very special. Some are pretty much the way they came from the factory. Let's see where the values lie. Well, this one has been modified. It's got a supercharger, but this is one of 4,038 of these. And the original price, $140,000 new, seemed like a bargain at the time, and it really, really was. Yeah, these look almost identical to the original GT40s that used to run at Le Mans, but they're actually just slightly larger. 
And interestingly enough, you know, they didn't own the GT40 name because that really wasn't a name that Ford attached to the car back then. It just happened to be what everybody else called it. And they really, even though they didn't own the name, they couldn't have used it because this car is 44 inches high. So we would have had to become a GT44. It just doesn't sound as good. Well, I actually got a chance to drive one of these about a year ago at the same time as a Lamborghini Aventador. I had my choice to get back in the boat after driving them. I chose this. This is one of my favorite cars that I've ever driven in my entire life. Other than the doors, which are very awkward and bonks me in the head as they close them because of the, uh, the way they're made. And no gurney bump, unfortunately. Well, you know the story. When Ken Miles was getting into the car in 1966 on the very first lap, he bumps his head on the door with his helmet, and he goes to the first lap. He can't close the door. We've seen it in the movie Ford versus Ferrari. He has to come back in. They don't explain, but it was because his helmet hit the door and caused a problem. I see the throttle body here is an aftermarket piece from AccuFab. That's out in Irwindale, California. John Mahovitz, a well-known mod motor drag racer, but he makes hop-up parts for these. One of the first to do so. The first retail Thunderbird ever sold. Take it away, guys. Yeah, it's got a great story behind it. This is a car that was actually used by Sports Illustrated when they wrote their first road test about this car. So it was pulled from the line, but it has a real VIN. So it's not one of those cars that came off as number one. It then went on a promotional tour. So it was seen by all kinds of people and written up and used for magazine articles and then later ended up in the hands of a customer. So unlike a VIN 1 like we see here at Barrett-Jackson, where it's sold directly to a customer, this went a circuitous route. That's right. It wasn't until the summer of 1965 that this car resurfaced and was recognized for what it is. That's when an enthusiast named George Watts found it in very poor condition outside a Southern California body shop. It had been left there by an owner who couldn't afford to pay his bill. So Mr. Watts found the car, saw that 0005 on the VIN, and says, wow, this is a very early car, and the rest is history right here on the block. Yeah, this is the earliest known Thunderbird that ever ended up in a customer's hands. And sometimes it's interesting when you get those early cars because it might not have been built the way the later ones were intended to be built. In fact, the magic number is right there, 0005. That's the spot right here where the money is, number five. And the money in this case is $340,000. Wow. Here's our number 1375. We continue in our catalog order. 2005 Ford GT. This original Ford GT has 1,300 actual miles. Powered by a 5.4 liter eight cylinder engine made into a six speed manual transmission. Carfax shows Ford Motor Company manufacturer safety recall issued on 127 2019. Passenger airbag inflator replacement. Some states issue miles exempt titles after 10 years. This consigner represents, and the current title reflects, 1,390 actual miles.
Original 70, Ford correct? GT with 1,300 actual miles, and it's made it to a six-speed manual transmission. 70, I gotta get down, you're out 370, 1,090, and 370, 1,090, dollars but I gotta get down, to get it here, look at it, I gotta get down, 370, pound, daddy, and 3 and 70, dollars how you doing? And 370, 1,000, dollars but I gotta get down, 370, dollars Gordon, y'all done. And 370, 1,000, dollars but I gotta get down, I would take 365 on a quick cash deal, and 365, and 365, 1,000, dollars and 365, 5, 5, dollars Sixty five pound daughter don't have to get anybody else all then Jay Bryan's in the lead and three sixty now sixty five and three hundred and sixty five pound daughter and five 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 on him had to get down three hundred sixty five pound daughter don't have to get down to get it here look at the day to get down what do you want to pay all through all done at three hundred and sixty five thousand and three hundred and sixty five thousand on it and three hundred and sixty five thousand on it out of it to get up on to get up on to get up on to get up five and a half so three hundred and sixty thousand dollars Jay Bryan now to the Michael Phelps Foundation car. Followed by another very special guest here, so. We have a very special car, but more importantly, we have a very special guest, an Arizona resident, the greatest Olympian of all time, 28 medals, 23 gold medals. Yes, yes. Please give a standing ovation to one of the greatest athletes in history who's also raising money for a very, very great cause, Michael Phelps, his wife Nicole is here with him. And what he, what he has had the courage to do and talk about is special. Michael, welcome to Barrett Jackson. Thank you, thank you, Craig. So I'd like to say thank you for, for letting me be here. Um, as you can tell, I am a little excited. Um, honestly, I'm so thankful that, that Chris has donated this amazing car um, to help us raise money for much needed funds for my foundation. We have three areas that we focus on at the Michael Phelps Foundation. It's uh, water safety, healthy living, which is mental and physical, but it's also the pursuit of dreams. So for us, we believe that everybody should have access to water safety and we should have, we, everybody should have the life-saving skill of knowing how to swim. We're committed to uh, reducing the, the stigma around mental health and we'll continue to share that message that it's okay to not be okay. Thank you guys all and bid high, bid often, and let's raise some money. Well, thank you, Michael. It's a great car. We made 25 of these. This is VIN number one. The chairman of Sherwin-Williams bought it back, Chris, back in, what was it, 2010? Yeah, 2010. 2010, you want to tell them a little bit about how this project came along, as it is a special car. Yeah, this is a Barrett Jackson, Ford Mustang, Roush Racing, Sherwin Williams, Planet Color, special edition car. There are only 25 of these made, as Craig said. And this car has spent its uh, life going to car shows across the United States. And we could find no better ending to it than bring it to back to Jared Jackson, put it into Michael Phelps' hand, and raise some money for an excellent cause. Thanks for having us here, everybody. Thank you. Tell them a little bit about what's underneath the hood of this Roush Mustang. Well, it's a 2010 Ford Mustang Roush Barrett Jackson edition. It is build number one, limited edition, as they said, 25 of them produced. Result of a collaboration between Sherwin Williams, Roush, and Barrett Jackson, powered by a one year only 540 horsepower R2300 Roush supercharged performance V8 engine. It's made into a five-speed manual transmission. And again, ladies and gentlemen, the entire sale price of this Mustang will benefit the Michael Phelps Foundation. Make some noise up in here, Scott Stell. Well, 2010 was the final year for the 4.6 liter three valve, made 300 horsepower, but with the Roush blower, that goes up to 540 horsepower. Something I really like are the graphics on this, the white Barrett Jackson stripe and a stripe and the glow goes on the hood. That's not vinyl, that is actually painted on and it's smooth and it's beneath a clear coat. Nice, good quality work. Michael Phelps actually lives here in the Valley, here in Arizona, and of course, because Barrett Jackson is based here as well, 
the two groups got together once again over a decade ago and said, you know, how can we do something for a great cause? And that's how they came up with this. And once again, all the money. You got to remember when, when the buyer buys this car, the check is actually written to the charity. Every penny going to the cause. Barrett Jackson doesn't take a commission at all. Much like Carol Shelby and Steve Saline, Jack Roush is in the game of modifying Mustangs for a greater performance. But early, early on, Jack Roush was part of the Gap and Roush, Wayne Gap and Jack Roush drag racing team in the series of Pro Stockers back in the 1970s. I think Larry Winkler just walked up and got involved in the bidding. He's selling a group of cars this week, and apparently he likes the foundation. Just walked up, put his hand in the air. Seeing Michael fell through that same fist pump when he got out of the pool at the Olympics. So for four hundred thousand dollars. Really well done. Four hundred thousand dollars for the good work of Olympic legend Michael Phelps's foundation. Thank you, sir. We'll be back with more from Scottsdale in a moment. Here comes lot 1415, another Ford GT, this one in white from 2005. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, I just uh, could almost buy one of these, at least back in the day when they were 140,000 bucks. Well, not so much right now, but I love the idea that these use the 5.4 camera as found in the GT500 Mustang, with one big exception. Mustang had an iron block. These got an aluminum block for lower weight, about a 90-pound weight savings, in fact. And some people said, oh, well, wait a minute, I can buy a kit. You know, there's super performance versions of these. There's other companies that have made them. Yeah, but this has been made by Ford. It's been engineered the way a new car has been engineered. It's got all the structure around it, and it's beautifully designed so that it works properly. And when it was new, it had a warranty from the factory. And how many cars, once they're sold to the public, begin to appreciate in value? And that's exactly what's been happening with these cars. Like you said, originally sold, I think, for 125000 something like that, 150000 Now we're seeing them north of 300000 Yeah, to your point, these did not have a depreciation curve. I mean, not even for a week. Well, I absolutely love the new Ford GT because you had to go in a different direction. Well, when you look at this, it just evokes those Ford GTs that ran in the late 60s and one at Le Mans. It's a beautiful design. Yeah, a moment ago, we did see that tapered tail on the modern Ford GT, but here we have a blunt tail, but that's okay because they were paying tribute more to the vintage car than trying to beat the wind tunnel numbers or actually go racing. But these are just a wonderful tribute to celebrate Ford's 100th anniversary. That was another thing. Wow, this isn't even a heritage edition. This is bringing solid money. I think it's slightly ajar. Yeah, sometimes cars that come through here, the hoods are halfway latched and stuff, so don't give them, don't judge them by, by what you see in the, uh, in the show field. But uh, yeah, these are made of SMC, sheet molded compound in some areas, aluminum in others. This one's only traveled 6,300 miles since it was brand new. 
six speed manual transaxle. No automatics here. Good or bad, don't know. Uh, about a year and a half ago, the Phoenix Art Museum had a display called Legends of Speed, and one of the cars they had was one of the, pardon me, not one of, the car that won both in 68 and 69. And once again, it looks so much like this in those Gulf wire colors. A couple of things to tell you about the we are so honored to be selling the VIN number one Mach 1 here, Dave Parasek, who is the Enterprise Product Line Management Director of ICONS, will tell you all about the Mach 1. And then we'll have Elliot tell you a little bit more about our long relationship with JDRF. Dave? Thank you, thank you. We have a very special vehicle here tonight. In 1969, the Mach 1 was introduced to the world, and in its first year, captured 295 speed and endurance records, and the legend was born. And after a 17-year hiatus, the legend is now back, bigger and better than ever. What's in front of us right now is a 2021 Mach 1, VIN number one, 480 horsepower, improved handling. This is the best five-liter Mustang we have ever produced. And I'm honored to be here tonight to represent the men and women at Ford that have worked throughout the years with JDRF. We are here to, to uh, for the charity JDRF. We've generated over $70 million throughout the years for JDRF. Eight million of that has happened right here through the generosity of Barrett Jackson. So you saw that video, you saw the children in it. They were unable to be here with us tonight. They need to know that we're with them. So let's do what we know how to do here at Barrett-Jackson, and let's raise money for such a great cause. Elliot, you want to say something quickly? On behalf of uh, JDRF and the 1.6 million people living with type 1 diabetes in the U.S., we thank Jim Farley, Dave Parasek, and most especially Edsel Ford. The partnership with Ford has yielded 500 million grants, $2.5 million in scientific research, and 70 clinical studies. Craig Jackson has been a huge supporter. You all heard that he did $8 million of the $70 million that was raised by Ford. The partnership has been great, and Craig Jackson has been great for the local JVRF. Thank you both, Ford and Bear Jackson. All right, well, thank you. Joseph, let's make history here again. All right, here we go. All right, how to get down, buddy. Well, the first Mach 1, of course, was 1969. It was uh, seen through 1973. And, of course, the Mustang 2, yeah, there were Mach 1 versions of that. But then it went dormant on the Fox platform and came back in 03 and 04 with the Shaker, the four valve, 320 horsepower engine. And I thought that would be about it, but no, it's back. You know, nothing goes away forever, especially in the performance world. This color, I love it. It's fighter jet gray with the orange accents, the little black accents up here. And I really love the way they've got these lights styled into the grill, which kind of has the look of the 1967 Shelby. Now, we go back and talk about the fact that the uh, 69 Mach 1 essentially killed the Shelby. I don't think that's going to happen here. This is powered by a 5-liter version of the Coyote, which is pretty much what it was. Not the 5.2 seen in the GT350, etc. But this makes 480 horsepower. You've got to remember the Coyote came out oh, a few years back with 414 horsepower, then grew to 444 aboard the Boss 302. But now we have 480 horsepower. Naturally aspirated, no blower. Closing in on $500,000.
had two four GTs at three hundred and three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. And here's a very special one. Craig and Steve talked about it earlier. Lot thirteen seventy seven and no expense spared. All option twenty seventeen four GT. And we're already closing in just about to hit a million dollars. Now you have to remember when people originally bought these first you had to get approved by Ford to be on the list to be a potential buyer. And then once you bought it, you had to agree not to sell it for two years. So that created this pent up market of all these people who wanted to be able to buy these. And now, obviously, it's starting to see them come to market slowly but surely. And just because two years elapsed doesn't mean all of them have been dumped on the market. So they're still not widely available. And the supply and demand game, well, while the first GT was made in huge numbers, 4,038 over its three-year run, these are being restricted to only 250 per year, which assures exclusivity. At this point in time, there are less than 1,500 of these on the planet. And of course, this is the car, not the actual car, but the base car that went back to Le Mans in 2016, 50 years after Ford first won in 1966. And they were able to win again in the GTLM category with Sebastian Bourdais, Dirk Mueller, and Joey Hand. Great chance for that opportunity for Ford to go back and redo what he had done in the 1960s. quite a bit different from the original GT or the second gen I should say those had a supercharged V8 these have twin turbocharged V6s but check this out these make 97 more horsepower despite the fact they're smaller a lot more technology here than well, the throwback V8 in the GT those early GTs had very few options available on them as well this thing has all sorts of upgrades including a $12,000 wristwatch that goes with it I mean, the bottom line, this is simply a race car that's street legal. Got something pretty special here, ladies and gentlemen. Pay close attention. Along came a glacier to turn a land of ice into a world of wonder. And while we love getting out there, we need to protect and preserve what's out there so that it inspires just as much awe in those who discover it next. Introducing the Bronco Wild Fund, created by Ford to connect people to the outdoors responsibly. To tell you about this, uh, Dave Prezak, he is head of icons for Ford, right? I sure am. Which covers some pretty cool cars, including the Bronco. Well, okay, we're ready to bring something extremely special here tonight. We have, in 1966, the Bronco was introduced to the world. In 1996, it went out of production. And the legend is now back. So what we have tonight in front of you is a first edition. We're gonna have, we, we're gonna build 7,000 first editions. They all sold out in minutes. This is VIN number one. This will be the first one produced and the first retail order. Now the vehicle that's in front of you is in lightning blue. That is a color that you can only get with the first edition. It has a 2.7 liter engine, 10-speed transmission, a Haas suspension system, our Sasquatch package, which includes 35-inch tires right from the factory. This baby is absolutely loaded. So we couldn't be happier. For 25 years, you could not purchase a Bronco and that all changes tonight. Now, all the proceeds from this vehicle are going for an amazing cause. It's called the Bronco Wild Fund. What is that? That's Ford's commitment to give back to the community and to preserve our forest and our, and our, and our wilderness. In every, the sale of every Bronco, we're going to donate money to fund that. And we've partnered with the National Forest Foundation and Outward Bound. So what does that mean? It means that we're going to preserve, 
We're going to restore and we're going to educate as we do this. Now, we all have seen the wildfires that have just absolutely destroyed. The devastation is amazing. And the National Forest Foundation has been there to support everyone that needs the support and to rebuild. And it's our time tonight, through the sale of this Bronco, to give back and do our part. And Outward Bound is going to educate the next generation so that they too can take care of our environment. So help join me, bring the Bronco back in a big way tonight, and let's get this charity started. All right, thank you, Dave. Go for it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, these will come with a 2.7 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6. It might sound small and puny. No, no, 310 horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque. But one thing I really like about Ford embracing its own design past is they have acknowledged the fact that the rear wheel openings on most Broncos were cut, and sure enough, they come that way right here. And we've talked about the fact that the original Bronco was a very short wheelbase. The original Bronco had about a 92-inch wheelbase. The base wheelbase for the new Bronco is going to be about 100, and they have some extended versions. They're not quite as choppy a ride as you would have gotten in those original versions. And like the original, it has coil spring, coil spring front suspension. Unlike the original, it has multi-link coils in the back. No more leaf springs. For the longest time on the Ford website, they just had a picture. No words with said Bronco. They just had a picture, I think it was some boots, and it was like coming. And they kept hinting that something was coming in the Bronco world, but they wouldn't say what it was. And it finally arrived. You know, they say good things take time. The first time that Ford teased us with one of these was back in 2004 at the New York Auto Show when there was a silver pre-production prototype. That was 16 years ago. But again, good things take time, and here we go. Because I really don't believe it. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. You talk about an add-on. All right, so we're very proud of this vehicle. And what we want to do is we want to offer up whoever buys this vehicle tonight, we want to bring you to Dearborn. We want to bring you behind the scenes, in the studio, meet the designers, meet the engineers, spend the entire day with us. Now that in itself sounds pretty cool, but, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but I'm going to sign our designers up to do live sketches for whoever comes out and spends a day with us. And you'll be able to take those sketches back home with you. We are also going to have dinner that night so we can wrap up a fantastic day with our designers and our engineers. You know, Dave Parasak is a hardcore car guy. About eight, nine years ago, I visited Ford's Flat Rock, Michigan plant to watch Mustangs being built. We had dinner with Dave, and the next morning, we're all supposed to meet at 9 o'clock. Well, he was late. Well, he was driving a pre-production Coyote, and he got a little <clears throat> speeding ticket on the way to our meeting. But uh, he's a car guy and a hot rod at the heart. What, the opportunity to hang out with the design crew and get some insight into it, those sketches, I think that's an awesome thing to be able to get for this. Interesting, interesting to note that while Ford's F-Series trucks have aluminum cabs, the Bronco has a steel unibody. $1.075 million. Thank you, sir. And speaking of red, here comes the car Craig and Steve talked about earlier. Lot 1408 is a 2018 Ford GT 67 Le Mans Heritage Edition. Well, the previous Heritage Edition on the GTs that were made in the, well, you know, 15, 16 years ago, that was based on the George GT that won in 68 and 69. This is based off of the Ford GT that won Le Mans in 1967. And it had a totally different look. Didn't have that blue and orange. We're at a million dollars on this right now. 
this is the car that was based on the car that Dan Gurney and A.J. Foyt drove to victory. An amazing victory the second year that Ford was at Le Mans. The astonishing thing is that if you had a time machine and you brought this back to 1967, this car could undoubtedly compete at Le Mans without any problems. Maybe just tires and maybe even win the field. Oh, you don't need a time machine. But it's yeah. a stock, it's a car you can drive every day. Think about that. Well, you got to remember, I mean, that there were all these complications in what they were trying to do back then. It wasn't easy for them to pull it off. This is a much more civilized car. And don't forget, they took this car back to Le Mans in 2016 and were able to race at Le Mans with Chip Ganassi's team and win 50 years after the original Ford GT win. And I go back to the fact, it's so amazing, the GT40 was able to win in 66, 67, both under Ford ownership, and then 68 and 69 when John Wire came back with some of the original cars. I love the view from the rear. The cockpit tapers to a point at the rear, creating two hallways for the air to come right through, be directed through the spoiler. This was absolutely designed in the wind tunnel. And Dan Gurney said when he was driving that 1967 car, it was just too heavy compared to the Ferraris, but he still won. 